Thank you for buying Red Sea's Potassium Pro test kit. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the test is performed. Before doing the test for the first time, read the instructions enclosed in the manual provided with the kit. There is also a color card giving simple graphic instructions to follow while you're actually performing the test. The first part of doing this test is by mixing 2 ml of, of aquarium water with 3 ml of RO water. Now let's do that. Two ml of our water sample. with 3 ml of RO water. We now start with adding 4 drops of reagent A. One, two, three, four. And shake for 15 seconds. One, two, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We now add eleven drops of reagent B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Again, shaking for about 15 seconds. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now we have to let that settle for about 10 minutes for the reaction to take place. This is normally the end of most potassium test kits because they are based on turbidity. But this system filters out the turbidity after the reaction and then we're going to do a titration. So the first thing we have to do is prepare our filter. Carefully remove one of the filter papers from the filter paper sheet. And now we're going to place it into the filter unit. You take the filter funnel, gently place our filter paper above, push the top into position, that traps the paper in between the two parts, and we place the assembled filter on top of the filter cup. We now wait for the rest of our 10 minutes for the reaction to finish and then we're going to pour it into the filter cup itself. Okay, 10 minutes has passed. So we just give our vial a little swirl to make sure everything is in solution. And we pour the liquid into the top of our filter unit. We now leave that for about another five, seven minutes while the liquid is draining through. And when the filtration is finished, we're gonna use the liquid that is uh, come through at the bottom. What we need to use afterwards is three ml of this liquid. And there is a line around the base of the cup which shows exactly where the three ml quantity is achieved. We can now see that we have filtered more liquid than the line on the bottom of the cup, so we have at least a 3 ml that we need, so we can dispose of the remainder of that. We don't need it anymore. And with our 5 ml syringe, we have to take out exactly 3 ml 
of fluid and there's our 3 ml. We put the 3 ml into a new vial which we're going to use for the rest of our test. The next thing we have to do is get our titrant ready. We take our uh, titration syringe and we're going to take exactly 0 0.5 ml of titrant into the syringe. Remember to keep the tip in the liquid at all times and we're measuring the 0 0.5 with the bottom of the plunger and there we have the plunger at 0 0.5. Let's put the syringe into the titrator and put it on one side until we're ready to use it. Turn the page on the instructions and we put in two drops of reagent C. shake it we get this nice purple color and we're going to add titrant until we get blue now unlike most of the titration tests you're familiar with where more titrant you add equals a higher proportion of the element we're looking for in this one it's the other way around so we're looking uh, the less titrant we add, the more potassium we have. So we must add drop by drop right from the very beginning. As I said before, with this test, the less titrant we use, the higher the level of potassium. So we have to do it drop by drop right from the very beginning. Okay, I think we're getting near the end point here. There's a slight change in color. And there it is. That's the blue color. For clarity, this is the color of the end point that we're looking for. And when I look at the syringe, we have used approximately 6.16 ml of our reagent which gives us a potassium level according to the chart of 422 ppm of potassium and that is the end of the potassium test.